Hey, what's up, guys? This is Taylor. Today is the 10th of August, and I just got done running the scans here for the Big Three Squeeze. So I'll show you what I'm working with. For starters, though, big thank you to everyone who came out for last night's webinar. Had a really good time, and if you want to check out the indicator here, we'll have a link in the... Uh, I got a freaking fruit fly. Come on. Come on, bro. But yeah, if you want to check out the uh, check out the indicator, I'll have the link in the description. We'll have another webinar next week, and then the class on Saturday the 19th. All kinds of good stuff. But alright, before we uh, take a look here at the scan results, first things first, checking out the S&Ps. We are three days into a new squeeze, and this current daily squeeze is not quite aligned like the daily squeeze you had back there in July. Or the squeezes you had on the daily chart, the two-day chart, and the weekly chart back in May. And the difference right now is in the signals. So back in May and back in June, July, structure is bullish, momentum is bullish, and you got that buy signal. Now we find ourselves with momentum under the zero line. So now by default we can't get a buy signal. Price is under the 21 EMA. And then look at the big three signals on all the lower time frames. Four hour sell signal, two hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute. So if you pop open the hood to the current daily squeeze, everything inside of it is bearish. And then on the scoreboard here, and remember the scoreboard don't lie. The bulls have one point and the bears have three points. So until things change, that negative shift in momentum down on the squeeze histogram and then all the sell signals here across your lower time frames. That all leaves that daily squeeze with a much better chance of firing short. So therefore, as far as the scan results, I am going to focus a little bit more on the bear side. Being that I don't think if I get long, I necessarily have the wind at my back. But we'll start with the longs here. So Baba had earnings today. And that leaves them with an A-plus squeeze on the daily chart. So if you took last night's webinar, you know the only thing I'm trying to trade is the big three squeeze A-plus setup. So if that label is green, that bad boy is green, we have a squeeze, we have the bull squeeze arrow, and we're trading at the buy zone. We can get long, and we can get long right here, right now. So Bob is looking pretty sharp. And then for Boeing here, Boeing came up on the 4-hour scan. Now, I love the weekly squeeze here. So this is actually the first week of that squeeze firing long. And what might keep the party going is the bull squeeze on the 4-hour chart. So on the 4-hour chart, you have the A-plus squeeze. Bulls got 5 points and the Bears got 0 points. So Boeing looks pretty good on the 4-hour. And then First Solar, FSLR. That has an A-plus squeeze on the daily chart. You also have a squeeze on the 4-hour. The 2-day, the 3-day, and the weekly. So a lot of squeeze action there in First Solar. And then two names that I would potentially try to buy in the dip. Um, one of them being UNG. So UNG had the green arrow. So there's your bull squeeze. Off she went, and now you're pulling back here towards that buy zone. And even though the daily squeeze already fired, if you look at the squeeze labels, the two-day, the three-day, and the weekly, they have the blue label, so that means they have a neutral squeeze. We don't have a buy signal or a sell signal just yet, but at least we got the squeeze. So potentially looking for continuation higher out of those bigger time frame squeezes. And then BTU here. This one's pretty solid. You know, if anything, for a push towards that daily 200, 25 bucks, um, give or take. So daily squeeze is A+. Plus. We can trade it right here and right now. And you also have a squeeze on the two-day chart and the monthly chart. So BTU, UNG, First Solar, Boeing on the four-hour chart, and then that daily squeeze in... Alibaba, 
they're all looking pretty sharp here. Again, the issue right now is more so just the market itself. So the way that I would look at BABA and Fur Solar, etc., is that if the S&Ps fire this daily squeeze to the upside, the names that look like Boeing and, and BABA and Fur Solar, UNG, etc., they should do really well. They've got good structure, they have good momentum, they have squeezes. If they get the market's blessing, they should do really well. If the market just kind of trades sideways, so if the whole month of August just sees the S&Ps trading in a box, Boeing, BABA, for Solar, etc., they might still do well, but the probabilities aren't as high. And then if the squeeze here actually fires short, and like I mentioned, at the moment, the, uh, the scoreboard here would suggest there's a better chance it fires short. So if that is the case, then it becomes a lot harder for BABA, Baidu, etc., to buck the trend and, uh, and fire to the upside. So you don't want to fight Mama Market. So there's a few longs, and then for a few shorts here. Um, so I'll show you Google. Trying to short Google kind of feels like trying to fight the biggest kid on the playground. Being that for now, it is one of the better looking names in tech. Um, but we do have squeezes on the 4-hour, the 2-hour, the 1-hour, 30-minute, 15-minute, and the 5-minute. So that tells us Google here is fixing to do something. Um, now, again, you're kind of picking on the, the big kid. But the 5-minute squeeze has a sell signal. So for now, the 5-minute is an A-plus squeeze. The 15-minute chart... There's also an A-plus squeeze, and then your 30-minute squeeze is also an A-plus squeeze. They're all lining up for a short. So Google could be interesting. Um, what I think happens bigger picture, the three-day squeeze with the buy signal eventually fires to the upside. So maybe, if anything, your 5-minute, 30-minute squeezes fire short. And that might be a bit of a buying opportunity for that three-day bull squeeze. So there's Google. And then one that we actually bought some puts on today. We bought some puts. McDonald's. And uh, it does feel a little un-American. Getting short the golden arches. Um, But this one's basically perfect, guys. So this trade might not work. But if my next 100 trades look just like this. I'm going to be in really good shape. So the big three squeeze A plus setup. What that tells us here on the daily chart. Is that everything's aligned for a really explosive move. Like structure is bearish. Momentum is bearish. Stack moving averages are bearish. Momentum crosses. Everything points towards that daily squeeze. Has got a really good chance of firing short. So that all sets the stage for a big flush. The trigger for the flush is when all of the signals inside that daily squeeze are also aligned for a big flush lower. So McDonald's here is a great example of that multi time frame alignment. Inside the daily squeeze, the 4-hour chart, the 2-hour, the 1-hour, 30-minute, 15-minute, and the 5-minute, they're all printing a sell signal. So again, structure, momentum, everything from the 5-minute chart all the way up to the daily chart, is printing that sell signal. And then down here on the squeeze labels. This is actually pretty rare. McDonald's has a squeeze on every time frame. Except the 5 minute. And the labels for the daily, the 4 hour, 2 hour, 1 hour, 30 minute and 15 minute being red. That means each of those time frames has a squeeze and a big 3 sell signal. So the squeeze on the daily chart is A+. Plus. The squeeze on the 4-hour chart is an A+, plus setup. The squeeze on the 2-hour chart, it's not quite near the entry zone, so it's not, not quite A+. Plus. The 1-hour squeeze is A+. Plus. The 30-minute is an A+, plus setup. And then the 15-minute, same thing. 
So there's one, two, three, four, five different time frames where we have what I would consider to be the perfect setup. An active squeeze, an active sell signal, and they're all trading at the entry zone. So from there, you can trade those squeezes with a good risk versus reward. So until that all changes, everything points towards that daily squeeze should break lower. So there's Mickey D's. Um, let's see what else I got here for you good peoples. MRK. Um, MRK. It is an A-plus setup on the daily chart. I think McDonald's is just a little bit cleaner. You've got a, a little bit more alignment from bow to stern over in, uh, in Mickey D's here. And then the S&Ps. We have the squeeze on the daily chart. For tomorrow, what I'm looking at is the one-hour squeeze and the two-hour squeeze. So the one-hour chart for now would be an A-plus short. The two-hour chart would also be an A-plus short. So for the context here, we are already in a daily squeeze that has a bit of a downward bias. Structure is breaking, momentum already broke, and again, the scoreboard says the Bears have the edge. They're up three points to one. You take that daily squeeze, you look for triggers on your lower time frames. What could trigger the squeeze short is if the one hour and the two hour squeeze is fire shirt, uh, fire shirt, fire short first, and then they can influence that daily squeeze to do the same thing. So the, the beautiful domino effect of the nested squeeze. So there's a few picks for you guys. Um, we're short McDonald's for now. And then, honestly, I think the easy trade might just be trying to focus on the indexes. The Babas, the Baidus, everything on the bull scan, they've got a good chance of working if the market trades higher. And then not so much if the market takes a, a big dump. Everything on the short scan should do pretty well if the market actually breaks down. Not so much if the market turns a corner and rallies. So, as always, everything kind of begins and ends of the S&Ps. Take the signals from the S&Ps. Try to get a sense of what the path of least resistance should be. And then you build your watch list around that. Alrighty, y'all. So, as always, thank you for watching. For those of you in the mastery, I will see you guys tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Central. And until next time, adios.